When I was 12, I made the dumb claim that visuals and polish aren't what make games fun. While there is some truth to that, it's a bad idea to live by. Of course, a game can be good without good visuals or polish, but in the majority of cases, visuals and polish really do enhance the experience. As an example, games like Dwarf Fortress are an exception. Obviously, the visuals aren't that great since they're just ASCII characters and there's not a whole lot of polish in the game. Unless you want to refer to the polish of the well-done game mechanics. Before we really get into things, I'm not really an expert in game development theory. I'm mostly speaking out of practical experience. I've participated in almost 20 game jams by now, in which I get a lot of numerical feedback so I can see how my design choices and where I put my time affects what people think of my games. Independent game development heavily depends on the idea of maximizing your time to quality trade-off, so you get the most quality out of the time you spend. And I am of the belief that polish is one of the best spots to put your time in terms of maximizing the quality you get out of your game. Of course, to polish you have to have something to polish, so you do need some decent base content, but I believe that in a lot of cases the polish applied to some base content is more important than the base content itself. If you don't polish what you're working on, it ends up being very bland. I think it's best to focus on putting all of your effort into making each section of your game the best quality as possible within reason. There's the idea of short and sweet, which I think is a very good idea to live by in terms of design. Unless you're hitting the point where you're trying to sell a game and people are returning your game because they finish in less than an hour or whatever. Polish can outweigh good game mechanics in many cases because of the way that polish affects the ability of your game to be seen by people and for those people that see it to be interested in trying it out. A lot of people are heavily affected by the media they see from a game more so than the base mechanics they hear about. The main way that game mechanics sell a game is when it's spread through word of mouth. Otherwise, the top level idea of the mechanics and the polish itself is typically what I believe sells the game. In general, boring tasks can be made surprisingly engaging with good sound and visuals. This is an idea that I really do focus on in my game jam entries now. I usually go for a simple idea and try to make it as polished as possible and it works out very well for me. A perfect example of very weak mechanics is walking simulators. Typically, they're very boring in terms of mechanics, but they're popular nonetheless, which shows that there's interest in the lack of core game mechanics. It all goes into the polish, and in this context, I'm referring to polish in a way where it's enhancing the experience. Polish itself can mean a lot, and as I just stated, I believe that primarily it's meant to enhance the experience of the game and isn't just visual. The fundamental idea is quality over quantity, the polish what you have, which I was just talking about. Although it's not just sounds and visual effects and whatnot, I also believe that mechanics can be polished, which I mentioned earlier with the Dwarf Fortress. Mechanics can be balanced and tweaked for a better feel, and I do consider that aspect to be polishing. Because when you first make your mechanics, normally they're pretty rough, and they're not very well balanced, and they feel bad in some way or another. And they do need to be tweaked to be better. In a lot of cases, that's very important to put some attention into, and a lot of people forget about that when they're polishing. There's a lot of clunky games out there. Aside from mechanics, you can polish through visual effects, sound, artwork, all sorts of media. So here are some ideas I have in regards to practical polishing. Some areas of polishing are impractical and don't give as much return as others. So it's important to focus on the most impactful areas when attempting to polish. In my opinion, that starts with refining the gameplay loop. Obviously this is subjective and it's hard to catch on to at first, but just be careful to not ignore obvious weak points slash clunkiness. If I just kind of have an idea in the back of my head that something might feel weird or might bug people, I make it my goal to fix it because I've seen time after time that in my game jam entries when I get that feeling that I see something that doesn't seem quite right, that's the main drawback for my game when people play it. 
Even now that I'm still more aware of this concept, I still struggle with it. I'll see these issues and then I'll be too lazy to fix them sometimes. Another area you can polish is the area of adding visual effects to actions to add more impact to the game. But it's important to focus on the crucial elements of the game that you really do want to uh, draw attention to or the areas where it's frequent actions, things that pop up a lot. You have to focus on those areas if you want to be efficient with where your time is spent. But still, it's quite fun to go crazy with visual effects on all sorts of interactions. Oddly enough, music can make or break a game, in my opinion. Unfortunately, it is my weakest area. From the games I've played, I've found that music has a huge impact on the game. The reasoning behind this is because music essentially directs the atmosphere of the game in my opinion and for me i'm assuming this isn't for everyone but i'm also guessing it's for a lot of people the atmosphere of a game is very important for certain genres so if you're in one of those genres where atmosphere is important you have to make sure that you get your music right and that is one of the most crucial areas to polish so don't get lazy with that if atmosphere is important, it's also useful to add atmospheric visual effects that enhance the atmosphere you want to give off. This can be done through various filters or particles and whatnot. And finally, sometimes it's worth it to pull back some on other areas to get more time to focus on polish, or to increase your ability to effectively polish. So primarily this applies to the title of this video where I say that polish is more important than content. So sometimes you want to pull back on the content so you can polish what you have more, but other times this applies to the base, I would say, quality or resolution of your art depending on what type of artwork you're doing. Sometimes it's better to go with a simpler version of artwork so that you can polish it better because in my experience it's easier to apply good polishing techniques to simpler art styles. Now that I've gone over some theory I guess I would like to get into some actual examples since as I said I get a lot of my experience from game jams. So I've got three games here all of them are simple concepts made in under 48 hours two of them were made in like less than 12 or whatever but they're still simple concepts taken to new levels through solid implementations of polish. For each of these games I'll show a without polish and a with polish version. The first one is bouncy shots. As you can see in the polished version, I've got things like collision sparks, screen shake, and this glitch effect when there's collisions. There's an impact effect, and there's also trail particles for the balls. There's also circle effects for the spawning of the balls, the deletion of the balls, like when someone scores or whatever, and for the score counter itself. These all add a lot of impact to when important things happen in the game, and it helps the player notice them. Another touch is the bouncing bar over by the goals when players shoot their balls. It's as if there's some recoil, which is a nice visual effect. There's also this reflection in the background here. It adds more depth visually. This next game is Linus. As you can see, with the polish, I've got things like motion blur, I've got line joints, those circles that join the lines, along with sparks that come out of them. That was half stylistic, it's not very mechanically useful to the player, but it enhances the experience still. Now here's something interesting, I added a trail to the ball that the player is bouncing. It is, in some sense, visual effects, but it also acts as a mechanical tool for the player to see how the ball is bouncing. It helps them get used to the way things bounce, because funny enough, in this game, the bouncing mechanics don't work the way they should in theory because the way they should work in theory turned out to be severely uncomfortable for humans to work with. So I modified it to make it easier to manage. 
even though it's not quite accurate. And the trail helps the player get an idea of how it works. This is a great example of how you can use visual effects to help enhance the mechanical aspects of your game. Of course, there's also the ball particles in this game and the spinning squares in the background that both add more visual enhancements to the game. And finally, we come across my game, Aero Blaster, which is the one of these three games that I spent the most time on, even though they were all made in under 48 hours. To start off with the polished version, I've got the camera zoom in narrow when the player shoots towards a target, along with the tilting background pattern that adds a lot of emphasis on the player's actions. It may be hard to see in the polished version, but you'll notice something's missing if you go and look at the non-polished version, but there are shadows for pretty much everything, and this helps make things look both flat and not flat at the same time. It adds depth but it also kind of makes the game look flat and arcadey, which was what I was going for. There's also physically accurate particles in the sense that they bounce off of things, and detailed explosions that are partially defined by the physically accurate particles. The funny thing about the explosions in this game is that I actually went and watched some guides on how you would normally animate explosions if you're an animator, so that I could make automatically generating explosions that are somewhat realistic in terms of what we expect for animation. There's a lot of aspects to these explosions, but it ended up looking really good. And that was the core element of this game. Your goal is to shoot things, and I wanted to make those shots feel impactful. So that, combined with the camera movement, put a lot of emphasis on that action and made it a lot more entertaining than it would, than it would have been without those visual effects. There's also the gun sparks when you shoot, which contributes to that as well, and there's both a player animation and particles that pop out when the player jumps, which contribute to movement, which is a very common part of this game as well. And finally, here's another different example of polish that I haven't mentioned yet. I've got arrows in this game that help direct the player through the levels to give them an idea of where they're supposed to go. Funny enough, in this game, the levels loop vertically, so you can drop down and go to the same spot you were before but I still use the arrows as a way to guide them through the level, even though it loops. The idea here was that I was basically adding a built-in tutorial or guidance system. In terms of polish, I think this is kind of similar to mechanical stuff in the way that it changes how the player interacts with the game to provide an overall better experience. If the player doesn't know what to do or if they're feeling lost, it really does hurt the experience. Even if in reality they're not lost and they're going in the right direction, it still hurts the experience if the player even feels like they don't know what they're doing. At least in a lot of games. Some games it's fine and that's part of the game. Anyways, that's it for the games I wanted to show off here. Remember to keep the idea of quality over quantity in mind when making games. If you come from a coding background, it's very tempting to code lots of mechanics that are complicated and entertaining for you as opposed to making a very streamlined and clean experience. This is a mistake I see a lot in game jams where people come up with all these complicated mechanics and rules and stuff and it makes it hard for the players to learn rather than focusing on something simple and making it enjoyable. If you're the type of person who's making games just for yourself, it's obviously fine to just do whatever is entertaining for you in which case you probably shouldn't have been watching this video in the first place. But if you're trying to get good at game development so you can make games for everyone, then I'd recommend polishing. If you come from an artistic background, I've seen that it's very common to forget to tweak mechanics for the best feel. I've seen a lot of visually appealing platformers that are very, very clunky. This is another thing I see a lot in game jams. And finally, if you want to get good at polishing, as I've used to back up a lot of my claims in here, I'd recommend participating in game jams. You get a feel for using your time efficiently to polish things, and you get to see how that polishing affects how people see your game, because most game jams have a rating phase.